two, so it looks like we're on. Um, welcome back. I'm going to look at the Geth code source again, and hopefully dig in some more about the state and the state tree. Um, go change into source GitHub. Ethereum, go Ethereum, TMAX. Cool. So, um, yesterday I was kind of looking at the the state tree and a bit more specifically how it starts itself up and what happens when you pass it the root node of a tree in a database. Um, I'm still very vague on how it goes about um, saving to the database. So I guess when Ethereum downloads a chain, it connects with its peers, it handshakes with the peers and establishes who's got the most recent tree. Um, and then if someone has a more recent tree than you, it will ask to download from them. And what happens is we go into ETH. And then downloader. Um, and then somewhere in downloader. Dot go. It goes through them. And I looked at it. What might have been last week, and it's completely forgotten. Got the gist of where it is, but. Rollback headers, but process block. Damn it. Process full sync content. So it calls import block. Results. Um, then calls blockchain insert chain. So if we go back to our blockchain, just call blockchain, there is an insert chain. Um, attempts to insert into the blockchain, really. Um, it calls insert chain below it. And then somewhere in here, they're going to call update the state. And this is where I want to see. Because I feel like the transactions of blocks are really just big list of blocks and that just gets put in there um, headers seals verify header recover from block for every item in the loop chain if it's a band one straight out of board validate body If error does not equal nil. Current block is a piece of the current block. Local the total difficulty. 
Parent teachers get blocked, so they're checking still. Yeah, here we go. Create a new state database using a parent block and report an error if this fails. So, in state dot new parent dot root. <laughs> and they got state cache, which has been, which is pretty much just wrapping the database and giving it some extra um, structures to work with. Um, Then they say process the block using the parent state as the reference point, which might be where we're looking at. Receipts, logs, use gas. They validate the state. <laughs> so it's somewhere here. It's either when they process the state, or when they validate it. I don't think it's that one, but it could be because state's going in there. And then there's a right block with state. I am going to have a stab and say it's this right block with state. But, you know, stab in the dark, really. You go on what they're named. Maybe they make sense, maybe they don't. So we're looking for a right block with state. Writes the block and all associated state to the database. Hmm. So. I'm just going to save this part so we can go back to it quickly. Validate body, validate. Uh, and back to here. <clears throat> so, what happens? They get the total difficulty of the block. Parent total difficulty. Make sure there are no inconsistent states. Current block equals current block. Local total difficulty. Get the total difficulty of the current block hash. Big integer, add the block difficulty and the parent total difficulty. So here they're just checking for um, the difficulty in the current block equals what it should. So you got your parents difficulty plus the blocks difficulty should equal what the current blocks dif total difficulty is. Um, So what they're doing is they got the local total difficulty, which is what's currently in the current block. And then they're going, adding the block difficulty to the parent difficulty. They're doing this because it's a big integer. And then I would expect somewhere here to be local TD and extern TD to be equal. Write the block itself to the database. So 
So they take the block hash, the block number, and they put the external total difficulty. So the header chain. Then they call write block. And this might be where I am finding my state. As they go in state.commit. But that does give me a little bit of concern because it's saying commit. And commit kind of comes across to me as they've already put the stuff in there, it's just not saved, and then they're just actually saving it. But who knows? Uh, CD into. Might be in core. Yeah, that didn't help. CD ETH. No. CD core. CD state. So yeah. Um, State object commit tree database go commit. On leaf callback. Um, hmm. What's the state object they're working on? They're being passed a state to database. It's going to be in database. Free callback. Does that look like a callback? Nope. State database. The state is a state dot state db. Hmm. State object, maybe? <laughs> I don't know where is state db. State object has a state db in it. Raw dump state state db. There's a file called state db. Um, there it is. Within the current Ethereum protocol, used to store anything within the Merkle tree. It takes care of caching and storing nested states. It's got a database and a tree, and then we call commit. Here it is. <laughs> Delete empty objects. Ooh. Again, 
I thought we were passing a number. So we're finding commit. And they've got a block dot number is EIP. Oh, okay, so that's a function that takes a block. Uh, EIP158. State clearing. Delete empty objects. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So that was when they got spanned. In all cases where a state change is made, results in an out state with a nonce bound zero, code empty and storage empty, herein after an empty account. They will delete it. Cool. So yeah, they got, they didn't get hacked, they got attacked and they just got the state database spammed full of um, empty accounts and now they're checking after EIP 58 that once you commit stuff that it's zero. If we're running an R5 node always flush but not full but not R5 not do proper garbage collecting. So, state dot commit. Clear journal and refund for address in S journal dirties. Commit objects to a tree um, for address and state object in S dot state objects. State object dirty code. State object dot commit tree. Mm. S dot tree dot commit. So I think all this is just checking to state objects, I believe, are just uh, the account balances and the account codes. Um, and we've got a big list of them that are to be added to the state database. And then some of the old ones are now invalidated, so it's mostly just checking that the old ones will be marked as needing to go away, and the new ones will be marked to replace them, and the ones that are completely new are put into the right place. And it's all maintaining that before actually being saved to a database is done in this like dirty code and journals. So this tree.commit takes a callback um, that has a leaf, which is an array of bytes, and a parent.common. So they decode bytes into account. Count dot root equals empty state. If it equals an empty state, they set it as the account root. Mm -hmm. Dot reference account root account. What's this reference function do? I do not know. If common bytes to hash account dot code hash code does not equal empty code. 
reference code parent. Occasion issues. So this reference is doing something. And this s.tree.commit is doing something. So we go up and we go into tree and see what commit goes in under there. Commit writes all nodes to the tries memory database. All nodes to the tries memory database tracking the internal and external for account references. So t dot hash root t dot database on leaf. So they're passing the on leaf function to this. Root of the colon hash. So after this, it's returning the new root hash of the tree, hash dot hash node. They call in hash root. So does a tree have a, like an array of nodes in it maybe? And then it's taking those? I do not know. Check the top clicker. So here's our tree somewhere here. We've got the root node. <coughs> Case gen increases by one with each commit operation. New nodes are tagged with the current generation and unload when the generation is older than the case gen limit. Hmm. So, nope. There's bit. They call hash root. It's like an on loop. Nah, see, I, th I feel this is after everything's been written to the database, which is what I was kind of fearing. Which makes sense because it says commit. So tree dot commit tree dot root equals cached. So up to a certain point, you've written stuff in a database, but you called this tree dot root, and it'll still give you the old one. So if you navigate the old one you won't find your new stuff, but it's still in the database. Whereas hash root gets updated, goes, it goes through everything that's now in there. So we haven't added anything yet. And we're not going to in this commit. It's just setting that t.root equals if it's nil. Um, Hash node empty bytes. H equals new hash hasher with an on leaf. Return hasher to pool h dot hash t dot root database. So they make this hasher and they go through every item. So I'm not going to go through that because I want to know how they add to it. I want to know how they create the nodes. Like you've got an account which has 
the four fields that an account has and they turn that into an element that actually gets written into the database. So we go back to here and I think it's this BC processor. If I go into blockchain processor chain maker somewhere in here is a processor state processor and they call so they call state.new which creates it from that builds to state um, using this database and saves it here and then they pass that into this processor dot process. They validate it, they commit it, and then write blocks of state, yeah. And then, I guess write blocks of state would set, uh, nope, can't see it in this one. would set the block state. <laughs> cool, process. What does it say? Range process. Yeah, search and process. In processor is probably not. Processes the state changes according to the Ethereum rules by running the transaction messages using the state database and applying any rewards to the processor and included uncles. Uh, cool. Returns receipts and logs. So they passed a block the past state database and a config file. Um, Dao block hard fought. So the checks for the Dao hack. Block dot transactions. State database dot prepare. Transaction hash block hash I. So state database dot prepare. That sounds more like what I was chasing. So in this state database, prepare. Transaction hash lock hash transaction index equals ti where's the state db come from self dot transaction hash when the EVM emits new state logs. Apply transactions. And they pass a transaction. So whatever apply P engine blockhead of state data. Apply transaction is the, this is internal, so 
here it is. Attempts to apply the transaction to the given state database and uses the input parameters for its environment. It returns the receipt for the transaction, the gas used, and error. Um, create a new virtual machine context. New virtual machine. What's a state called? State DB. Oh, I'm going to pass the state DB to the virtual machine. root equals intermediate root. I'm going to create a new receipt. Receipt.hash equals transaction hash. Receipt gas used equals gas. So this is all creating the receipt. Oh, they call finalize now. True. Apply the transaction to the current state. Create a new environment to hold all the relevant information. So apply message. It's not here. Um, back into core. Is in state transition. I'm getting close. Um, state transition was in here. Computes a new state by applying the given message against the old state within the environment. Nice. Ah, oh, they make a new state. Um, a new state transition, then call transition DB on it. And that returns a byte. Frig. It's got the state in it, then they call transition. Transition database will transition the state by applying the current message and returning the result, including the used gas. Returns an error if failed. Message equals state dot message. Sender equals ref. Homestead contract creation. Intrinsic gas. Used gas. EVM dot create. Sender data blah. State dot set nonce. State dot add balance. Hmm. Just one moment, I need to go check something.
I'm back. So, the state transition. And they actually make a structure to do this. Transition database, account reference. The message dot from so the message they're referring to is a transaction message EVM chain config is homestead Pay the intrinsic gas state dot data. EVM dot create. If it's a contract creation, they call EVM create on the contract. The message dot two is nil, it's contract creation. If it's not a contract creation, it's t dot data. What's data then? Um, Derive new state root. Hmm. Made when a transaction is applied to the current world state. Does all the necessary work to work out a new valid state root. So an EVM create, they got a return and the ST gas. Virtual machine error doesn't make you nil. Refund the gas, it's a state. Add balance to the coin base, return that. So, they create a contract or they call a contract. Within this virtual machine. Um, do I want to dive into EVM create? I feel like that's where it's all done. Cool. Going into EVM now. Um, runtime, runtime. Runtime, runtime. So it's create.
Nah, that's on the easy hit. This is on runtime. Nope. Cool, let's get a CG virtual machine. EVM. Yeah, this here. Um, create two, one and two. Creates a new contract using the code. Create two, then it calls it smaller create. One uses SHA-3 and instead of the usual sender and hot. Sender and nonce hash. Crypto create address. Caller dot address. Get nonce evm dot create. They call it EVM create. Here it is. Um, this doesn't look like it modifies the star. Now it's got EVM state database. Get nonce. Set nonce. EVM. Create an account. Here we go. Here's interesting. Using the address. This is starting to get where it is. Cool. So they've done all their stuff, all their checks. They've got a nonce. Now they create an account on the EVM. Create account address. EVM state database set nonce. EVM transfer. State database call address address value. So what's the code? Code and hash. Create database. Set code address return. So the state database has got create an account, then they set the code. Then so let's go have a look at that. So I feel like the state database has a transitionary account in it that it's been create object address explicitly creates a state object if the state object with the address already exists the balance is carried over to the new account So, self.create object address. Mm. 
new trees equals new.setBalance. So call create object. Previous equals get state object address, new object, self address account with blank account. Set state object, new object. So where's new object? Um, create object. Create account. Uh, where are you? Snapshot, revert to snapshot. Finalize. Self destructed items. For intermediate route, prepare, commit. Revision. state objects. So I reckon it's going to be in state object. New object. Here we go, straight away. Pass it the database, the address and the data account. Data.balance, data.code hash. <coughs> and they create a new state object here. And then what? Set not append, set state object, new object. And they just add it to state objects. Dirty storage. So to make the object, it gets set in the state object array. Equals object. So the state database has an array of objects. So it's a map, not an array. And that is added to. State objects, which will be modified while processing a state transaction. Holds the live objects. State object dirty. So state transition creates it, calls. Um,
Cool, executes a contract. No recursion, can transfer. If state database exists address. Exists. Reports whether it exists. Returns true for suicide once. Um, Precompiles, precompiled contracts, homestead. They get a pre-compiled, then they call create account, which is the same as the other one. evm.transfer, core.address, to address. Transfers the ether from one account to the other is a function that's passed from it. Mm. So if we go back into the state database, it calls get not get state object address. Yeah, okay, cool. So this state database is literally just, which is called the state cache, has everything there that you can search for in regards to state. So if you've got an account, you go state dot get code hash of an address. Um, and it's mostly working with um, Get state object. State object dot get state self dot database. So this is probably a good one to follow. So get state has a get state object. Here you go. Um, if object equals self state objects address and object equals nil, it does not equal nil, return to object. If not, they call try get address. If error equals do not equal nil, fail to decode it. So here they call it by calling try get. So you got the tree. Insert into a new object. If state object does not equal nil, get state. State object dot get state. So they call try get. On the tree, which is what is actual. Um, so we go look at tree, we might find try get. Here dot try get below. Key dot root and key. So they got the node, which is called original node. So the type of the original node is nil, return nil. If it's a value node, return nf. N, N, the value and then the node. If it's a short node, 
they resolve it by calling n.val in the key. And it just recursively digs through it. Cool, 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 cool. So, that's how they get it out, not how they save it. So, somewhere in here is the finalize. Which is called after everything's been added. Removing the self destructed objects and clears the journal as well as the read one. For address in range journal dirties. Um, if suicided, delete object. State object dot update root state database. S dot update state objects. State object. <laughs> so they go through everything that's been dirtied, get the address out of it, and then they find that address in the um, mapping they've got to get the state object. Um, and they call update root and update state object. So what's update root do? Update tree database and then data root. Write cache storage modification into object storage tree. Self dot get tree database. For key value in range dirty storage. Return tr. Skip the no up changes. So this is a different tree, I think. This is a tree inside the storage, the objects storage tree. Um, so they update the root, update state object, state database, clear journal and refund. So update state object writes a given object to the tree. This might be exactly where I wanted to get. Um, so get the address, RLP encode to bytes, try update, they call try update the address and the data. So T dot insert they make a value node of a value key equals key bytes to hex. They call T dot insert. node prefix so it's got no prefix um, the key and the value node so if 
n equals node. if length of key equals zero. Um, n dot type, so the root node there, look at the type of. It's a short node. Um, match len. Prefix length, key, n dot key. So if it's a short node, it means that it's in this extension and the key is a certain amount, um, certain amount the same as what the node is. And then you get the match length. Match length equals the whole of the key. Insert the end value at the end. If not, um, otherwise branch out at the index where they differ. Branch equals full node, flag, so they make an empty full node. Um, Key dot insert the key up to the match length plus one. So they're making two they are geez, okay. So the node was a short one and it extended to a certain length. Now because it's shorter. They're extending it to the shorter length and then making a split. So they're inserting into the tree um, prefix match key length. the key up to the match length plus one and the value and the end dot value. Yeah, okay. So the nodes value, they make a full node, put the original value that was in the first node into somewhere in that full node and then put in the value into um, another one. Reduce this short node, otherwise replace it with the short node leading up to the branch. Case full node. Resolve hash if I hit a part of the tree that hasn't been loaded. Return short node key to match length branch key flag. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what are they calling insert? So they're calling t.insert recursively. So this is just getting called over and over and over. And depending on what node they're calling it on, and they're changing the key as it goes along. Crazy. Cool, I think I want to stop there because I'll go through this a bit deeper, this insert because it's kind of complicated at the moment. And I think I need to fully understand local Patricia trees a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for tuning in.